Welcome to another episode of my podcast, or if you're on YouTube, another episode on YouTube that nobody watches or listens. I got, I've had a couple people watch, like, maybe like five minutes in, and I'm always impressed with that, but I don't really look at my numbers. Anyways, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about is, this is absolutely hilarious to me. It is, it is Ellen Page has come out as a man. I had all the support in the world for that. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. And she is now going to be a he named Elliot Page. And Elliot Page will continue playing a female role in Netflix in the Netflix show after announcing he is a transgendered man. Oh, this is so juicy and delicious on so many levels it's i guarantee you like i don't take this shit serious it, my thing is i don't understand why people take acting so serious well if you're gonna act as a gay character you gotta be gay no i mean you know uh, Neil Patrick Harris was pretty, one of the pretty much the most awesome dudes at, when he played a straight man. And at no point did I consider it anything other than this is an actor playing a character. You know, I just, I don't take, only in America, only in America could people take entertainment so serious that gender identity politics has to infect it. But that's where we are in 2020 because nobody has anything serious to bitch about. No real problems. The world is so safe and neat and bubble wrapped for everybody. The the helicopter kit, helicopter parents, you know, kept their kids away from any adversity in life, failing work harder that people just sit around and bitch about boring unimportant stuff but that's where we are and it is awesome that it has come this far around so uh confused fans of the netflix show this is coming off the daily mail the umbrella academy have called it political correctness gone crazy that elliot page will continue playing a female character despite coming out as a trans man when it's considered unfair for cis people to play trans roles. That headline pretty much sums up the whole thing. I mean, it's great. On Tuesday, Elliot was best known for his role when he played a pregnant teenage girl and went by the name Ellen announced that he was a transgender. He was transgender. And his pronouns are he and they. Look, before I really get into the absurdity out of me, out of this whole situation, I want you, if you're a new person to my podcast, to understand me. I don't actually care what you do in your personal life. And I don't judge you, right? If you're a woman and you've come out as a man trapped in a woman's body. I have no problem calling you he. Um, I'm not, I'm in the Jordan Peterson school of thought where I'm completely against forced speech backed by the government. It's just dangerous and it's just not really that big a deal anyways. But I don't judge you, man. You're a dude that wants to be a woman. I, have at it, man. You've got a finite amount of time on this planet before you're giving this rented carbon back to the universe. So it's just, it's just, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. Like it doesn't come into my head on a daily basis or even at all when I, except when I see absurd stuff on the internet. It's, but it's just as an outside. So all of that being said, with the non-judgment like, you're going to get made fun of around me when something's stupid. And, it, you know, Elliot could come out as a man. 
And, you know, if she started, he started with, so confusing. He started with gender identity politics. I'd start mocking him at the dinner table for even being ridiculous. That statement says it all. Elliot, who is best known for his role as Juno, where he played a pregnant teenage girl and went by went by the name Ellen, announced that he was transgender. That is only in the year 2020. Could that paragraph actually be in print journalism? He was universally embraced by Hollywood stars like Ellen DeGeneres, congratulated him. Congratulated him on what? Let me let me let me let me get to the let me let me dig into this for a little bit. Okay. If I'm to accept that you are transgender and that you are a man trapped in a woman's body, and that you have always been a man trapped in a woman's body, and you were born that way, what is there for me to congratulate you on? You're just being you. That's literally like me coming out and saying, hey guys, I'm a cisgendered, uh, straight white male. Oh, congratulations on that. You know, it's I identify as a giraffe. Okay, you know, I'll sit back and be like, okay, dude's a giraffe, whatever, man. I this, doesn't have any effect on my life. Go about your business, homie. Be a giraffe. But it's just, why are you congratulating? Some, it's congratulating somebody on a superficial feature. Hey, congratulations on being straight. Hey, congratulations on being gay. It, it's You're getting congratulated for shit you didn't earn. While many, and this is where it's got, I know this article is going to, I didn't read it. I just clicked the title so I could do a podcast. But this is where it's got to get, you know, the naysayers are evil. While many lauded Netflix for the decision and wondered if the show's writers would now make Vanya's character transgendered, others questioned it and shared their confusion. confusion. Which, there's a lot of confusion to go around. On my part, on pretty much anybody who spends any more than five minutes on identity politics, where I'm like, okay, I'm fucking confused, man. They asked whether it was hypocritical to have a transgender person playing a cisgender role with the reverse had when the reverse has been deemed unfair and discriminatory against trans actors. Yes. See, I predicted this. Well, I didn't really predict it. It was just, it was just the natural course of it. And in looking at like Tim Pool's comments on this whole thing, identity politics has only one way to go. And that is, you're going to eventually eat your own. I talked about this earlier in a different podcast, but it's the inevitable outcome of it. Like <clears throat> the more you congratulate people on superficial features that they didn't earn and vie to be a bigger victim, you can never be woke enough for the mob. And <laughs> the hypocrisy always comes back around uh, transgender. All right. So here's some of the, here's some of the tweets. Playing devil's advocate, but what it? But if a straight, no trans played a trans character, there would be uproar in Hollywood. So should a man play a woman? I'm all for letting him be happy, but it's another example of political correctness gone crazy. We now have a straight man playing a gay woman on TV. Yet people cry out for representation and non-bias. Yeah, it's see <clears throat> where we're at now is we're at we're at the crest of identity politics. It's it's a, it's gone as high as it can go now. We're, we're we're at the zenith and it can only fall apart from here. Because this is where everybody else see the thing with identity politics 
from my understanding is this. Only crazy people are really into it. Normal people, they don't really give a fuck. I'm just being honest about it. Normal people, they just go to work. You know, they come home. They've got maybe a few hours to sit around, communicate with their spouse, play with their kids, play with the dog, and then they got to go to bed. So they just walk into this world where you can't say that. Why? Well, because it's verboten. Who made it? A, who made it verboten? Well, uh, a 19-year-old gender studies major at Everest State College in Oregon or Washington, wherever that place is. Yeah, but I don't give a fuck about that. See, this is where the inevitable pushback begins. Because you got... A guy like me, he's just a normal dude. I go to work. I like to drink beer. I like to do my stand-up comedy. And you create all these rules. And as a normal dude, I'm like, yeah, I don't have time to learn all those rules. Well, you need to. Yeah, but I'm not going to do it. Well, then you're a bigot. Yeah, <clears throat> something really not. I mean, you can throw around. I mean... Calling me a bigot because I won't play your gender identity politics game is literally like calling me a werewolf. Okay. It's, you, you could just replace it with whatever ridiculous thing when I don't agree with you and you want to go to that level. Here we go. Do you believe in equality of outcomes? No. I believe in hard work and the meritocracy. That's what I believe in. Well, you know, you're racist. Okay. Now, we'll do it again. Uh, do you believe in equality of outcome? No. I believe in the meritocracy and hard work. Well, you're a vampire. <laughs> there's a really, there's a really, that's a, it, it's really saying the same thing. You, That's all you've done there is you've just thrown out a word that, is intended to scare me, but it doesn't. Because the mental trick that you're using has been played on me so many times in my life. It's been played on everybody so many times in their life. It is an attempt to bullying you to bully you into acquiescing to the other person's side. And it is ultimately an ad hominem attack at its core. Because you say that, but a racist person could, in fact, be right. I'll give you an example of how a racist person could be right. You could take an Aryan Brotherhood member, and if he tells you that the Earth is a sphere, he's not wrong. And if you say he's a racist, it has no bearing on the fact of the matter that the earth is indeed a spherical shape. So, I mean, that's just, that's why I'm so excited about this because it's about to get so confusing on who can do what that everybody just kind of like, it's like the fidget spinners. That's what it's like. Remember fidget spinners to control ADD and you would look at kids and you're like, what are you doing? They're like, it's a fidget spinner. I have ADD. Okay. First off, ADD is not real. All right. It's just, it's just not. You're trying to force yourself to do crap that you don't want to do. That's why it's not real. That's why you don't want to do it. But I have attention deficit disorder. Do you? <laughs> do you really? Let me ask you a question. Let's say you were, when you were a kid and you had attention deficit disorder. Did you uh, read Harry Potter books? Like, y yeah. Did you spend hours reading them? Like, yeah. Okay. Don't have attention deficit disorder. It's not a real thing. Doesn't exist. It was made up to control unruly kids. And in an effort, instead of actually understanding the psychology of children, it was easier to just chuck, chuck drugs at them. But... You know, it's, 
that's where we're at. So, uh, a few years ago, there were these things called fidget spinners. And all these people with ADD said, oh, it calms my ADD. And I was like, okay, whatever, man. I mean, you do you. Anyways, turns out wasn't really anything more than a fad. And at a certain point, everybody just got confused about, okay, what is this? You spin it on your face. All right, I'm done with this. They abandoned it and moved on. That's where we're at with gender identity politics in 2020. We've crested. Don't don't think we're out of danger yet. We're in for about one more year of this. And when it's shown that the Biden-Harris campaign, the presidency, has done nothing for the nation, everybody's just going to kind of go, all right, I'm done with this. Companies are going to be done with going woke because they go broke. Um, so it, it just makes me happy when we get to a point like this. That's the entire point of that rant. And we're going to move on to the next subject. And that is some dumb shit that came out of Obama's mouth. Okay, so... I'll read you this. Obama criticizes Democrats for alienating voters with defund the police slogan. With the defund the police slogan. And warns that the white population fears the African American community will get out of control with police reform. Only. In, I wish you could see my face right now. I'm smushing my eyes and rubbing my temples. Because only a politician in an exalted place who is divorced from the realities of what the working population goes through. Obama insisting that America's racist is one of the most mind-bogglingly stupid claims that... I shouldn't say there's still systems in America that are, of course, racist. The war on drugs is one of them. It was set up to target African-American communities in the hippie population, which, you know, Charles Manson did all the work there. But Barack, this is what I would say to him. I was sitting in front of Barack Obama drinking a beer with him. I'd be like, what kind of dumb shit did you just come out of your mouth? Your Harvard or whatever at Princeton educated mouth that's stupid. Well, the, 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 the white people are afraid that if we defund the police. All right, douchebag. Okay, so you're insinuating. Last time I checked. You've been one of the most popular presidents of my lifetime, and you happen to be African American, and the vast majority of people that voted for you were, in fact, white people. So, how is why is identity pol well back on the identity politics because it's such a powerful weapon? So, Obama said Democrats alienate people with the usage of defund the police. Yeah, because you need police. Look. I'm not a hundred percent supportive of the current incarnation of the war of the police force. A lot of work needs to be done. I acknowledge it, but bad people are only coerced through the use of violence. That is why. When you got rid of cops in New York City, and this is a city that's run by Democrats and everybody's disarmed except the criminals. This is why this dude gets on my nerves, him and his little butt buddy Biden get on my nerves with, uh, well, we'll target the ammunition. Okay, well, I'll just make it myself. It's not that hard to figure out with the internets, but... You don't need an AR-15 for home defense. Like, don't tell me what I need, guy guarded by AR-15s. There's like, you just, 
get disconnected from reality when you live in this bubble and you say dumb shit. Obama said that white people are fearful that black people will get out of control if police reform is carried out across the U.S. No, I'm worried. Okay, I'll give you what I'm worried about. Less police on the road. There was just a guy and uh, his family. They went on a rampage and that one person ended up dead. The perpetrator happened to be white. I'm afraid that there's not going to be anybody there to confront this dude. And look, if you want to just say we're not going to have any police and you can be armed to the teeth everywhere you go, I'm fine with that. But you're not going to say that. And this gets to the crux of my beliefs about Barack Obama. So I'm going to wrap this up. I think Barack Obama should do like George Bush did after he left office. He shut the fuck up and stopped playing politics. Why do you, if I was sitting across from him again, why do you want to get involved in this? What is it that you're getting out of this besides a raging goddamn headache? You're rich. You got $150 million. Last time I checked, it was the United States of America that allowed that to happen. I don't have $150 million. I'm not jealous of you. I don't care about the color of your skin. I care about the content of your character. I don't understand why this is such a hard concept to understand that just because somebody feels differently than you do, it's not necessarily racism. You know, Obama, I look at Obama like I look at Beta O'Rourke. Okay, these two are cut from the same cloth. You subtract, you subtract the color of their skin. Beto O'Rourke, Robert Francis O'Rourke is basically a less charismatic version of Barack Obama. That's what he is. You can't, you can't say that Barack Obama isn't a charismatic man. He is, but Barack Obama and Beta O'Rourke have more in common with each other than we have more in common with each other than they do with me. I look at both of them and I just tell them like, not that I'm a hard man by any stretch of the imagination, but I think you both are soft men. And, you know, it's like, We'll give another example. Colian Noir, which is a YouTuber who specializes in guns. He happens to be African-American. Okay, if the country's so racist, who do you think's going to hang out together? You put the four of us at a dinner table, right? You know, Beta O'Rourke, I call him Beta, and Barack Obama start talking about politics. I'd be like, cool, lame. Look at Colian Noir. Like, wait, what kind of gun are you shooting right now? Oh, really? You know way more about guns. Tell me about guns. That's where it's going to end off is common interest. Yes, there's still racism in America. There's, nobody's saying that they're, well, some dumb people are saying there isn't. But like at the end of the day, it's not as bad as everybody wants to make it out to be. You know? Ugh. So I'm just going to call that a podcast and uh, move on.